The latest craze in the PC world is that of a vertically mounted GPU. It serves to show off that beautifully designed graphics card cooler, which is usually custom, and in this case, a lot of people want the custom coolers. And if you had it horizontally, then most of the time you just get to see a logo on the side. Who wants that? But with tempered glass and acrylic side panels now becoming more of a requirement rather than an option, and we're even seeing them being introduced into budget PC cases that cost next to nothing. We're gonna see what you really need to know, however, with these risers. And we're going to couple this with an RTX 2080 Ti from Gigabyte to really see if we can get any differences between a riser cable on and riser cable off. Now I will start with a stern warning. Not all PCIe risers are created equally. For example, all three of the riser cables I've used before have not worked. One has come close, but started crashing and giving me weird errors, and the other two, well, most recently I tried one of the two failed risers on the Core P7 for the all AMD build video we cut here on Tech Yes City. And well, with the riser, the system just wouldn't post, no matter what we tried. Take the riser away, and sure enough, it posted straight away. With that being said, I'm now using this Cooler Master Vertical GPU mount kit behind me here because a friend in Brisbane got it on good old Gamtree for $40 and allowed me to use it for this video. And it actually works. Except for one thing, I don't have a case here where I can mount it officially to as just yet. So we decided to use this old NZXT S340 and well, it can host the vertical mount fine with a little hacking. Now squeamish viewers may want to look away because the bracket does fit in any case with seven full height PCI slots and screws into the original hole. Though if it mounts up to any case, what's the issue you might ask? Well, because the GPU is now sitting this way, it can interfere with the slats on the actual case itself. So I had to give them a tiny snip to remove the bars that were otherwise blocking cables, for example. And for the Antec case, I even had to zip tie it off. Usually the Cooler Master bars simply unscrew and rotate to accommodate themselves in a Cooler Master case. And if you're lucky, you may only need to do minimal modification, but chances are you're removing all the bars, especially since we are testing this RTX 2080 Ti with triple monitors from the budget WoW PC. I'll put the link for that up here. It was certainly an experience. A few mentions, however, we must test performance of this riser to see if we're losing any bandwidth or FPS by extending the PCIe runs or if the cable itself is nerfing performance. Firstly, one important warning, however, with most vertical GPUs mounted this way, you will either lose access to using all but one PCIe slot, unless your motherboard has some on the top or a full speed lower PCIe slot. Or for those cases that do have a dedicated vertical section, you'll be pushing the graphics card uncomfortably close to the side panel, possibly even starving it of airflow. However, onto that testing. So for these tests, I actually decided to test on two different systems. We've got an AMD AM3 Plus system behind us here with an FX8350. We've also overclocked that, overclocked the memory, and we've even done the test with both non-overclocked on the GPU and overclocked on the RTX 2080 Ti. Done the exact same thing with the Intel rig, which features a 7820X on X299 and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, clocked to 3200 megahertz. First off here, we'll take a look at the AMD system and with riser versus no riser in Unigine heaven, we noticed virtually no difference. And then moving on to Time Spy Extreme, which is where we're particularly stressing the graphics card because it is a very intense 4K benchmark, we yet again got virtually no difference between the two which is all down to pretty much margin of error, and we'll talk about that soon. And then moving on to testing another benchmark, Unigine Valley, we yet again saw no difference in performance. And we are testing again on a 1440p times three monitors, so that's a massive resolution here, which will be stressing the graphics card quite a lot. Moving on to the Intel system, however, things were not different at all again. So Heaven didn't show much of a difference at all, again within margin of error. Moving over to Unigine Valley, we saw virtually no difference yet again. And then moving on to Time Spy Extreme, the 4K intense benchmark, we saw yet again no difference, all down to margin of error. And so now we're moving on to Verdict Timer, we virtually saw no changes to performance, all within a tight margin of error, which is completely normal. 
What we actually did too was overclock this 2080 Ti just to make sure it wasn't being limited, not just by the riser, but also by the CPU itself to ensure that we didn't have any CPU bottlenecks coming into play when we were trying to get these numbers for you guys. But what about some other differences with having a riser versus not having a riser? I mean, in previous runs, you could have had the GPU getting hot because it was mounted vertically in a case with no airflow. And maybe there's the other way around where it could actually help airflow but one thing that's important to note however the performance numbers could be affected if we used an inferior PCIe riser cable as I said before at the start of this video I tried out three different cables before this kit right here and I couldn't even get to the post screen so maybe there's some differences with cheaper cables that could actually work but may affect performance either way however in this case we used the cooler master vertical GPU kit when the side panel was off on both cases so in fact we probably even slightly improved airflow because the air doesn't have to wind up at such a turbulent angle I mean very sort of anal retentive stuff but to say it made a difference would honestly be placebo and not like that band back in the 90s they made some good tracks but not some good facts but more importantly I will admit one thing it did make the build look so much better especially with the cards that have a more aggressive front cooler like this Gigabyte and the Windforce 980 that we have not only does it look more aesthetically pleasing but it also serves to cover up the unused plugs and capacitors of the motherboard for example giving that clean look without even trying and if it's one thing you guys will know when it comes to cable management sometimes I just like the clean look to stand out when you sort of take the back panel off there may be some ugly cable management there but it's all in the name of saving time however now back to the serious face one thing that is important to stress is the quality and hence the price of the riser cable just like the age-old saying you get what you pay for it applies to PCIe risers too not only will a cheap riser affect signal quality and possibly speed but also may not even let your computer turn on properly at all as we're going to say now for the third time, this is the only GPU mount I've tried to this date that has allowed the computer to boot without some weird BIOS errors. And trust me, those errors were frustrating and it's just wasted me a lot of time in the past where people in the video when I did the all AMD PC pointed out their frustrations with failed PCIe risers as well. But regardless, this build behind me is now so much more appealing whether you want to add that to a sale or keep it on a desk, it will definitely make anyone's eyes shine. But with that said, I am going to be looking for a budget option that you can get off AliExpress or eBay that actually works properly. So if you guys know any suggestions, be sure to drop them in the comment section below and also let us know in the comment section, what do you think of vertically mounted GPUs? Have you tried it yet? Are you just gonna shy away from it? You think it's one of those crazes that doesn't need to be touched just like RGB or are you a fan of RGB and you're gonna be moving into vertical GPU mounts? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.